Hi, and welcome to the third build. So because I'm working on a really big project for next time, which I'm super excited to show you, this month's video is going to be a little bit shorter, but no less interesting because today I'm going to show you how to use this controller to control, well, anything. This is using a technique I created last year to control some fighting robots I was working on. And I later realized that if it was good enough to keep something that can do this, or this, under control, then it was good enough to be applied to so much more. So let's just get into how this all works. That way you can use this technique too. First thing you gotta know is that the controllers for all the major video game consoles, be it Xbox, PlayStation, or Switch, all use Bluetooth to communicate with their consoles. And inside the robots, and in everything you saw me control earlier, I connected an Arduino, specifically an ESP32, which can also communicate over Bluetooth. So, if I connect the controller to the Arduino, which in itself can attach to basically any electronic device because that's what Arduinos do, you can use the inputs of the controller to control anything. But how do you connect a controller to an Arduino? And how does a controller even know what to connect to in the first place? Well, for starters, any device with Bluetooth connectivity has an address, usually unique to it, that allows devices trying to connect to it to find where it is. Just think of it like a regular street address, which tells you where to find a house or a store or something. Therefore, devices first connect by pairing when one device asks to connect to the other, and if the other one agrees, they'll share addresses with each other. That way, they'll know where to look the next time they try to connect. However, with the Arduino that I'm using, there's no easy way of pairing a device like a controller to it. So we can't really use that method to our advantage directly. Cause I said that devices usually have unique addresses. And that's because you could change a device's address to basically anything you want. So the trick in order to convince the controller the Arduino is the device it's supposed to connect to is to change the Arduino's address to the one that the controller is looking for. So what you have to do is first connect your controller to either your phone or computer, copy down that device's media access control address, or MAC address for short, into your Arduino, and then it'll be ready to connect. But hold on, having them connect is a great first step but the Arduino still has no clue what the signals it's getting from the controller even mean. You see, we normally take for granted that the devices that we connect to each other just work as intended. But that only happens because ahead of time, someone wrote code that says, when I receive raw data, so just ones and zeros, from this specific device, those ones and zeros actually mean something. And because I was working with an Arduino, which has no code on that ahead of time, I had to write that code myself. If you saw my last video, you'll know exactly how this is done. And because this time I didn't write the code for the controller, I had to do some bit detective work to get it to work properly. That means that once I had the controller connected to the Arduino, I had to print out a list of all the ones and zeros it was receiving so I could figure out what button does what. Let me just show you an example of what I had to do in order to figure out when I was pushing the down button. I would push the down button on the controller see if anything changed on that list of bits, and if I saw any of them go from zero to one, only when I'm pushing down that button, that means that that bit is the one I wanna check if I want to know if the down button is being pushed. Once that was done, I had to repeat that process for every single button, every single button combination, because sometimes the signal is different when holding down multiple buttons, and do a similar thing for joysticks and triggers because instead of looking for one bit changing, I had to look for a group of bits because it takes multiple bits in order to represent all their possible positions. And yes, that is as tedious as it sounds, but once you have it all mapped out, you're pretty much good to go. The only thing left to do was to add the bonus features by having the Arduino send data back to the controller so you can make use of its lights and rumble motors. This is totally not a necessity to use the controller properly, but being able to use all the features that the controller has as if it was connected to the console opens up some pretty cool things. For example, whenever those fighting robots were about to attack, we'd have the lights in the front of the controller turn red. Now, this is actually the reason why we chose to use PlayStation 4 controllers in the first place, because not only is it kind of fun, 
but it's also a bit of a safety feature because that way everyone around you can know the robot's about to be at its most dangerous or see if it's doing something it's not supposed to be. The good news for you is that all of this controller work has already been done and it's been packaged into an Arduino library you could go download and use right now. All you have to do is click on the GitHub link in the description, follow the instructions I have laid out there, and then grab your PlayStation controller and get creative. And I keep saying this, but you can really use this library to make this controller do just about anything. If you want to, I don't know, film yourself and use your controller to control your camera settings from a distance, you can. Or if you want to attach an Arduino to your TV's remote, that way you only have to use one controller for both your console and your TV, you can. And even if you want to plug your Arduino into your Nintendo Switch so you can use your PlayStation controller to play those games. Don't? I mean, you can, but don't. <laughs> and if you really want to get fancy with it, the ESP32 also has Wi-Fi connectivity. So you could send signals from your controller to their Arduino and then over the internet to control things remotely. Now, before you ask, PlayStation 5 controllers. I don't own one, so I haven't been able to test out the compatibility. But what I do know is since the code that I wrote was adapted from someone who did the exact same thing for the PlayStation 3, with the only major change being that signal mapping I showed earlier, it should be pretty easy to adapt this to the PlayStation 5 as well. Because of that, I included the code that prints out the bits of the signals that the Arduino is receiving from any controller in the library examples. That way, if you have a PS5 controller, you can figure out the signal mapping yourself and get it up and running. Also, if you do that, let me know because that would be great to share with other people too. And yes, that does mean this can potentially work with any controller. Frankly, the only reason why I haven't done it with the other consoles is, well, for the Xbox, that just sounds like work. And for the Switch, well, I tried. So at this point, I'm able to get them to pair, but for whatever reason, they will then just never connect, and it'll just sit here and flash at me. Why are you like this? But, uh, that's gonna be a problem for another day. Speaking about another day, if you want to see the big product that I'm working on, make sure that you sub. <laughs> make sure that you. Make sure that you sub. No. <laughs> make sure. Speaking of another day, if you want to see the big project that I'm working on, make sure. <laughs> Ooh, I, can't, I can't say that with a straight face. But but seriously, I really don't like saying this often. But for once, I actually think what I have coming up next is truly something special. So, make sure you don't miss out. For context, let's just say the past few videos are what I do when I'm just trying to have fun. And this time, you'll get to see what happens when I try to do my very best. And until then, I'll see you later.